Hi-yo, everyone. It's Sandra from Off to Class. Let's talk about technology. It's all around us and it's constantly changing. So in this unit, we're going to talk about what the newest and latest gadget is and we're going to compare which phone is better, faster, or stronger. It's all about comparative adjectives. It's pretty easy. So for one syllable words, just add an ER to the suffix. And when an adjective has two or more syllables, use the word more in front of it. So we don't say things like this couch is moderner. We say this couch is more modern. But avoid comparative adjectives that don't follow the rules. Adjectives like fierce, stupid, true, lonely, or tired. And don't forget about those irregular comparatives. Better, worst, and farther. If your students understood comparative adjectives, then superlatives will be a breeze. So it's important that you enforce the definitive article, the, from the very start as common practice, even if it's not used in every instance. Now, you're either that teacher that hates or loves the present perfect. I assure you that in Unit 23, you will enjoy teaching the present perfect. In order to teach the present perfect, you have to know when and why we use it. So the present perfect talks about actions that we have or haven't done up to this point in our lives. For example, I have traveled to Spain, but I haven't traveled in Italy. Your students are going to love this lesson. In unit 23, your students will get the chance to talk about their favorite actors, things that actors have and haven't done, along with films that your students have or haven't seen. So get ready to introduce regular and irregular participles. Also, try to use the present perfect as soon as possible to ensure that they're using the common irregular participle. So in unit 24, in the final unit of the A2 module, it's all about making future plans using the bare infinitive. Most of your students probably don't need an introduction to going to. Just make sure you model and drill the form of going to in connected speech. Most teachers fail to do this because they believe people shouldn't use the form gonna. But in reality, all native speakers say some version of going to as gonna. I mean, it's really up to you. Just don't leave your students hanging thinking that they will hear going to in daily speech. The last thing I'm gonna mention is should and shouldn't for giving advice. Your students will have the opportunity to read about travel expert tips. So when you teach should and shouldn't, there are two things I want to mention. First, your students may use the infinitive rather than the bare infinitive. For example, you should to carry water at all times instead of you should carry water at all times. Second, your students may start to interchange have to with should, which causes an issue when the negative forms shouldn't and don't have to are not substitutes for each other. For example, you should eat breakfast is similar to the meaning you have to eat breakfast, while you shouldn't eat breakfast is not the same as you don't have to eat breakfast. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time. Click the like button and subscribe. Bye, guys.